Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the items which are really worth the splurge versus those which I don't think are worth the splurge. I talk a lot in categories in this sort of video usually, so in today's video, I really wanted to pinpoint these specific items that I think are absolutely worth the splurge, whether that's because they're super versatile, really classic, or otherwise just really useful items I think would work in anyone's wardrobe. And I'm gonna be contrasting those against the items which I don't think are worth the splurge as much. So these are items that I own and even though I may think they're beautiful, I haven't found to be particularly useful or I don't think I've gotten very good value for money out of them. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. This video is in collaboration with MyTheresa.com. I've partnered with MyTheresa so many times before. They really are one of my favorite online stores. They are absolutely a go-to for me for all things luxury. And everything in today's video in the splurge category is available from MyTheresa. So I will link everything down below in the description section if you did want to check it out. So first up are my splurges, the items which I 100% think are worth the investment and is worth the money for your wardrobe. And my first item is a great trench coat. Now for me, trench coats are very much in the realm of Burberry. Obviously other brands do them as well, but I don't think anyone does them as well as Burberry. And I recently splurged on this one right here. I did a lot of research into the different kinds of trench coats that Burberry does. This isn't my first one from Burberry and I'm Going to touch upon that later in my save category but I've never quite gotten it right so I wanted to do a lot of research into this purchase you know these aren't small purchases and I decided upon this one which is the Chelsea they do so many different styles and types they do the Kensington they do they have so many different names and it takes a little bit of time to figure out what's what but I ended up going for the Chelsea because this is the slimmest fit and the mistake that I've made in the past is just not getting the fit right and often they're a little bit bulky, they don't fit quite right, and for me the cut is everything because that's really going to determine how much I like to wear it and how often I ultimately reach for it. So I decided on the Chelsea and I could not be happier because this is the perfect slim fit trench coat in my opinion. It's slimmer on the arms which I love and I often think that it's the arms which really give it away. If the arms are cut too wide then it can make your overall silhouette look a little bit bulky I think. So I love the fact that these have slimmer arms and then you just have all the makings of a very very classic Burberry trench. So you do have the inner check but then you also have all the button detailing. I got this one in black but it's not a true black so it's kind of like a very very dark navy black which I love because the fact that it isn't super dark means that I'll be able to wear it in spring and autumn and all those transitional seasons as well. You do have the belt as well which you can either kind of loop through or you can just tie. I prefer to tie mine but you can do it either way. You have the pockets just all the classic Burberry details. So for me a trench coat is 100% a worthwhile investment especially if you do take the time to research and get the fit and the cut right to make sure it is something that you're really going to love and reach for a lot and they make for the perfect transitional pieces and these will just be able to last you years and years and years. For me transitional dressing is the hardest to get right I think because you're not quite in summer but at the same time you don't want to fast forward and go full on into coat season before it's cold enough so a trench coat is the perfect in between item and I just don't think that there's anything more classic than a Burberry trench. The second item that I 100% think is worth a splurge are Valentino Rockstead heels, but very specifically the kitten heel. I've spoken about these before, but I am a hardcore fan. I own these in two colors, and these really are some of my best value for money designer shoes because of how much use I've gotten out of them, and also just how much I enjoy wearing them. I do think that these are classics, and these have been around for years. I don't even remember when they first came out, but I bought my first pair, I think, when... It must have been four years ago, and they were kind of very of the moment then, but they'd still been around for a little while. And I just feel like they go from strength to strength. You know, the kitten heels still consistently sell out, and they're just absolutely beautiful items, I think. Extremely comfortable, they make a great statement, they go with so many different things. You can get them in a whole variety of different colors with different kind of colorways with the top leather bit and then the actual kind of main shoe. They're just great items. And for me, again, comfort is key when you're going for an everyday shoe. If it's not comfortable, I don't care how good it looks, I'm just not going to want to reach for it very often. Whereas these not only deliver on the look front, but also the comfort front as well. So 
I'm a huge fan of these. I would recommend them to absolutely anyone. And even though they have been around for so long, I just don't think they look dated at all. Like they still look very of the moment to me. I do think that these are a classic wardrobe item. And for me, they are 100% worth the money. Next up is a SLG. I absolutely love my SLGs. I think they're a really fun way to indulge in a luxury brand or a luxury trend without absolutely breaking the bank. And you can get some really good value ones out there as well. You can also get some which aren't so great value, but one of my favorites in terms of the price and the value for money is the Saint Laurent card holder. I think the look is so incredibly classic. They're extremely durable as well. The grain leather is pretty much indestructible. I've had this for quite a while now and it looks absolutely brand new. Like there is nothing that will mark these, which is what I love about them. You can get them in a few different colors and they do re-release these every single season. I think new this season is this beautiful beige option, which is so gorgeous with the gold hardware. Super, super lovely, but you do always have a few variations to choose from. And they're just very functional for what they are. You know, you do have a few different card slots. So you have one right here another one at the top another one right in the middle where you can put kind of business cards or anything like that and the same on the other side as well so you can fit a decent number of cards in here but at the same time it's very very slim line I just think it makes such a beautiful statement and for the price I just don't think you can go wrong you know obviously this is still very much a luxury item but it is very classic in its look you have the very iconic YSL and for just a touch of everyday luxury I don't think you'll be able to spend your money better than on something like this so I do think this is a classic wardrobe item and this one has served me really well and I would recommend these if you were looking at them. Next up is a bag choice and for me it's the Gucci Darnassus. I absolutely love this bag and for me for this kind of category I think the Darnassus is a wonderful choice. You know for this kind of mid-sized shoulder bag option I absolutely adore this and I didn't get this right at the height of its popularity. I waited quite a while before buying it and I liked it obviously when I got it but I've really been surprised with how often I reach for this and how much of a go-to it's become for me. And it is just a very, very versatile item. I think because of the canvas monogram, you know, it goes with everything. And even though it does have these kind of seasonal elements of the suede, I use this all year round. You know, I use it in summer, I use it autumn, spring, winter, everything. And I just feel like it works all the time. I've mentioned this before, but I really do love the chain drop as well. I love the fact that it sits a little bit lower. And if you like the Chanel Jumbo chain drop, then I think you'll probably like this too because I like the chain drops on both of them. I like the fact that they sit a little bit lower. I don't love the fact that some bags kind of sit quite high up. So the fact that this does have a longer chain drop is amazing for me. And I just think it's a gorgeous option, which really is very, very versatile. You know, I wear this with summer outfits and I think it just adds the right amount of edginess. But at the same time, I'm happy to pair this with a winter coat. I think it looks very chic and pulled together. So I love this. I'm a huge fan. It isn't the lightest bag, I'm not going to lie. But for me, I don't find it too heavy at all. I love how statement making it is. But at the same time, I do think it's a great neutral as well. So I will forever be a huge fan of this. It's a very constant go-to for me and I absolutely love the look of it. I do think it's going to be around for a very long time yet. Next up are a pair of shoes and in this category, I wanted to mention one of my favorite, in fact, I think these possibly could be my favorite ever designer flats, which are the Nicholas Kirkwood Bayer flats. I absolutely adore these. I own them in two different colors. So I have the pale pink ones. I decided to show the black because my pale pink ones are looking a little bit worse wear. I have worn those to death. These ones are newer, so they're looking slightly better, but these are the most comfortable designer flats I own. I absolutely love them. And again, if they're not comfortable, I'm not going to reach for them. And these get so much use. I think they're a great shape. You know, they're very classic. Loafers are very of the moment, but they've managed to make something that is quite trendy into something that's a very classic looking shoe I think you have the pointy front and you have this beautiful gold detailing right here and these are just such a great shoe to team with everything from you know a dress to jeans to pants or trousers like they're just so great I also saw Kate Upton is it wear these and she wore them so well I absolutely love the way she styled them she had a proper kind of business outfit on and I thought she looked so incredibly chic these have been around for a few years now and they keep re-releasing them because they are so popular and I absolutely see why because these are just the perfect designer shoe in my opinion so 
I love these, they're so comfortable, you can walk all day long in them without any issues. And I think it's just such a great looking, very, very classic shoe, which still looks right on trend now. And my last bag pick for this category is my Valentino tote. I think a tote bag is an essential in anyone's bag wardrobe. I love the style, I think it's so functional and chic and I just love it. And the Valentino version is just so, so beautiful. Dan is a fan too, obviously, if you watched that video that I did with him, he named this bag as his favorite. Who knew? That was a surprise to me as well. But I do understand the appeal even to him. I think it's a beautiful color. I love the fact that it makes a statement, but at the same time, it's still very suitable as an everyday bag. It's obviously very popular as well because Valentino have re-released it for this season. And they have put the price up, I saw, by I think 40 pounds, but you can still get this color at the older price which is 885 so you can definitely get more expensive tote bags out there this isn't a cheap one but the quality is really beautiful i love the studs i love the stamping i love the leather i just love everything about it so i'm a huge fan of this i can't believe it took me so long to jump aboard the valentino bag bandwagon but i am fully there now i think the quality is just stunning and this has fast become one of my favorite tote bags and then finally, the very last item in my splurge category was a good a classic pump or high heel. And for me, there is no high heel in my wardrobe that I've gotten more value for money out of than my Jean Vito Rossi pumps. I have these in three colors now actually, but I only have my pale pink ones and my black ones here. I also have them in the lilac. And for me, these are fantastic because not only is it the perfect, perfect shape, you know, it's a beautiful silhouette. It's very high, but it's very comfortable for the heel height. They go with absolutely everything. And because there are no straps or anything like that, it really helps to elongate your leg. But above all, it's the comfort level. And I have so many pairs of heels, which I love the look of, but I just don't reach for because they are more uncomfortable. But these, because they are suede, they really do mold the shape of your foot. And I don't know if you'll be able to see that. These are my newer pair. And as you can see, like the shape looks slightly different. And that's because these ones, which have been absolutely worn to death, really do mold to the shape of your foot. And that's why there's a little bit of a change. So I can actually see where my toes go. And it's because the suede is so soft and malleable but at the same time it still looks the part you know it's not kind of falling apart it doesn't look misshapen when you wear them and I am just forever a fan of these I think Jean Vito Rossi makes some of the most beautiful heels about and I don't think you can get any better and for me these are 100% the best value for money shoes I have just because of how much use I've gotten out of them if I know I'm going to a wedding or anything like that I pretty much only ever consider Jean Vito Rossi heels because of how comfortable they are especially if you're comparing them to you know Louboutins or Manolo Blahnik or Jimmy Choo you know I've tried them all and these always always come top in terms of comfort and also the look as well so absolutely adore these. I think they're wonderful and just the most perfect high heel. So onto my saving category now and I'm corresponding each point in my saving category with the same one in my splurging category. Hopefully that makes sense but hopefully you'll get the idea anyway as I go along but for my splurge category I had Burberry trench coats and I'm hoping this isn't going to be too confusing but for my save category I also have Burberry trench coats but those that I found on sale because this isn't my first Burberry trench coat. I think I bought three coats or trench coats in the past that I've always found on sale or at a Burberry outlet. And even though it was never exactly what I wanted, I justified the purchase because I was like, well, look how much money I'm gonna save. This is such a great deal. But because it wasn't exactly what I wanted, there was always something a little bit off with it, whether that was the fit or the color or the style, it wasn't exactly what I wanted originally. And because there was something always a little bit off, I never ended up reaching for it as often as I thought I would. And I end up selling every single one, which is why I don't have anything here to show you. And because it was clothing, it had terrible resale value. So I lost a lot of money on each one. And if I think about all the money I could have saved, I could have bought the original one that I wanted, which is what I just showed you earlier, and then had money left to spare. So even though sometimes it does work, obviously to get a bargain, you know, I love my sales as well. I would always say when you are considering something that's on sale, really ask yourself if it's exactly what you want or if you're just settling and even after you buy that, are you still gonna want that original item? 
definitely something worth considering. I wish I had known that a few years ago. I would have saved a lot of money and I would have had a trench coat that I actually loved. I would wear a lot, a lot sooner. For my second save item, I have my Valentino high heels. And this is in comparison to my splurge item of my kitten heels. Kitten heels are great because they are so wearable and so comfortable. And even though I do love the look of these, I have not gotten anywhere near the value for money I have versus the kitten heel. And you'll be able to see this from the soles. You know, these are very, very well worn. I think I'm probably gonna have to replace the tip soon because I have worn these so much. Versus these, which I mean, I have worn them, but they're definitely not my most used shoes. And you know, they're not the worst high heels I have, but they're certainly not like slippers at all. You know, it is a very, very high heel and if I think of all the money I spent on very high heels which aren't that comfortable how much money I could have once saved and then also put that money towards something like this which is a great kitten heel option still a high heel still has that glamour option but I use and wear these all the time so for me this is a no-brainer you know if you're gonna splurge on a shoe make sure it's something that you can walk in and also find comfortable enough that you're going to want to wear them even though I love to look at these I don't actually find myself getting excited to wear them because I know my feet are probably gonna hurt a little bit by the end whereas these I'm always excited to wear because I feel great in them I think they look great and my feet don't hurt at the end of the night. For my third save item, it is SLGs. I had my Saint Laurent card holder for my splurge item, but for my save item, I'm gonna go with coin purses. And I feel bad using this as an example because it actually is one of my favorite SLGs. Dan actually got this for me for Christmas and it's a limited edition Louis Vuitton piece that has these adorable polar bears on it. But the reason why it's one of my favorite pieces is nothing to do with the actual item and everything to do with one, the fact that Dan gave it to me and two, I love polar bears and I think they're adorable and I love this illustration. But the actual item I'm not used at all because for me it's just not very functional and I think this could maybe change if you drive everywhere and use a lot of kind of coins for parking I'm guessing I'm not sure do people still do that um but I don't really use coins at all so <laughs> I don't use this at all and I wondered you know first I thought is maybe because I was scared to with the illustration you know I didn't want it to rub off but then I realized that even if it was completely plain, I wouldn't use this anyway. Um, so I do think that there are lots of SLGs which are useful. You know, I love card holders. I always have extra rewards cards that I like to carry around. But for me, this is a big no-no in terms of functionality. I will forever treasure it because it was a gift and I do think it's a beautiful print. Um, but if I was going to get another one just for the function, you just a plain version one, I don't think this is worth the money. I think you're much better off spending your money on something that you are actually gonna use every day versus just a nice to have item, unless you are a collector, in which case, you know, I think these are beautiful items, but if you like to really be functional with your items, I think there are much better picks than just kind of novelty items like smaller coin purses. Next up in my save category are seasonal bags. And as an example, I have here my Saint Laurent Toy Lulu in the velvet. I love this bag, I think it's beautiful, I got a lot of use out of it last winter, but for me it is a very obviously a seasonal bag, you know, velvet is more traditionally a fabric associated with colder weather, and even the colorway, you know, it's really pretty deep burgundy, it's a little bit festive in my opinion, so I wouldn't really use this during summer, I haven't used it since it got a little bit warmer, and if I had 20 bags, you know, I think this is a beautiful option, but if I only had a couple of bags in my collection, there is no way I'd go for something like this, just because I think there are much better ways to spend your money, and even if you love the style, and I do think it's a great little crossbody style, they do this in the full leather version, I think they released this season this beautiful kind of rosy beige leather which is so so lovely that makes for a great year-round versatile option which you'll just be able to get so much more use out of than a purely seasonal style so for me seasonal styles they're great but you'll always be able to spend your money better unless you have a very very large collection so if you only have a couple an all leather version is just going to serve you a lot better and ensure you get much better value for money and my fifth save item are uncomfortable designer flats. And I feel like I'm ragging a lot on Valentino here, which is not my intention because as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of so much that Valentino does, but these definitely were not comfortable at all. And I still love the look of them, which is why I haven't gotten rid of them, but definitely weren't comfy. And over the years, my tolerance for designer flats has really gone down. I used to very much be of the mentality that, oh, I'll make them work, I'll break them in, I'll do all my little tricks to make them more comfortable. But now I'm at the point where if I'm spending this much money and they're not comfortable right from the first wear, 
I just don't have any patience for it, you know? There are lots of cheaper options which will be comfortable from the first wear, so if they don't fulfill that kind of basic criteria, I'm just not getting them, which is why I don't buy many designer flats now because I do feel like a lot of them are really uncomfortable. My Nicholas Kirkwood Bayer ones are great because they are comfy right from the first time I wear them. No breaking in required, but if I do get any sense that they are gonna require any breaking in, I just skip them because for me, they're not worth a statement. I'd always rather wear, you know, a pair of kitten heels or something like that, or otherwise just save the money and go for a cheaper pair of flats, which aren't going to be uncomfortable and aren't also going to cost a fortune as well. So an easy area to save is uncomfortable designer flats, even if they do make a very pretty statement. On to save item number six now, and it is clutches. And I've spoken about this concept before. It's the same line of thinking as seasonal bags, but unless you have a lot of bags in your collection, you know, 15, 20, 30 bags, it doesn't really make sense to prioritize spending money on something that you're only gonna be able to use very occasionally, like a clutch. This is my Jimmy Choo box clutch, which I absolutely love. For me, this is almost like a work of art or a piece of jewelry. I think it's so, so beautiful, but it doesn't get a lot of use just because of how specific and niche it is. And I think there's always the tendency, you know, when you're spending a lot of money to maybe think that you should spend it on a special occasion piece or something that you're going to be able to wear for fancy nights out. But I'd always say that if you're concerned about really getting value for money, it's always better to prioritize those everyday items. When I was first buying my first Chanel bag from the boutique, I bought a maxi and then I ended up getting a jumbo and selling my maxi, but there is no way I was looking at any of their smaller bags. Even though I love the mini and I love their smaller flap styles, I just knew I wasn't going to get as much use out of it as I would one of their larger styles. So I was really only looking at the jumbo or the maxi. So if I was going to build my bag collection from the ground up again, the first style I would go for is a tote bag, I then go for a shoulder bag, and then maybe I'd look at at a mini bag and then later on down the line I'd perhaps look at a clutch so I would always say if you're looking to get amazing value for money and really look at getting your cost per wear down focus on the styles that you wear the most whether that is you know a top handle or a shoulder bag whatever style works for you prioritize that and splurge on that and for my last save item, I have statement shoes. Now, this is one that's taken me a long time to come to terms with because for years I would buy statement shoes. I love the look of them. I thought they were so cool and fashiony and I just wouldn't wear them at all. And actually after the last video I did with Dan, I know a whole bunch of you requested that I do a shoe version with him. I told him about it and he was like, what am I gonna say about 50 pairs of nude and black pumps? And it's true, I have a lot of the same shoe style, but that's because I finally learned what works for me and what I wear the most. And I finally realized that if I buy statement shoes, they may look cute on my shelf, but that's really all they do. Because every time you get something where you have to plan an outfit around that shoe, which is essentially what a statement shoe is, you really limit the usage. And I certainly don't have hours per day to plan out my outfits. You know, it's usually more of a grab and go situation. So I like my accessories to be very easy to pair, which is why I go for a lot of neutrals. I like to go for things that I know will work, that I know will be comfortable. So for me, a suede neutral pump is just my go-to. And as I get older, I guess I just don't wanna waste my time with things which I know aren't necessarily gonna work. A good example of this is unfortunately this beautiful pair of Aquazuras, which I love the look of. I think they're absolutely stunning, but they are definitely a little bit more out there in terms of the design, at least for me. For some people, probably not, but for me, this is definitely still in the category of a statement shoe. And as you can see, I have not worn these a lot at all. So these weren't the cheapest. And for me, if I'm gonna spend that kind of money on a shoe, I've now learned that I'm much better off going for something which I know is gonna work versus a statement shoe, which it might look great with, you know, one or 2% of my outfits, but I really want something that's gonna go with so much more than that. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any save or splurge categories of your own down below. I'd love to read about them. I will link everything I mentioned down below in the description section, but if you have any other questions for me, then just drop me a comment. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next one. Bye.